Hello there and welcome to this vlog of April 2023 and today's video is just going to be a very very short one really on like the final roundup thoughts on the Kickstarter that closed a few hours ago. It's really quite early morning here. Uh, I've kind of usually get up early anyway so I thought I'll just do a video just to kind of put a cherry on the top of the little series of videos that I've been uh, doing on the Kickstarter. Um, I suppose long story short, and I'm not going to retread all this because we already know it's been wildly successful, but it has been wildly successful. The end um, amount that was taken was over just over 7.5 million, which is phenomenal. Um, yesterday was quite weird. It really did start slow. I mean, I, when I checked it um, yesterday, UK time morning, um, so that's what, like 15, 16 hours before the Kickstarter closed. It was kind of sat on about 6.8, 6.9 million. And there was a period where I was like, oh my goodness, is this just not going to kick off at all? And we're not even going to reach 7 million. I kind of had that thought, thought for a, a few hours, got a little bit more worried when the US like, you know, morning came. Um, so you get, you know, you get to nine o'clock in America, uh, which is what, like 3 p.m. approximately UK time. So at that point then I was like, uh, we might not hit seven million here. And that will scupper a lot of plans because a lot of people were relying on the extra force packs that we were entitled to at that seven million stretch goal. But luckily, um, the last like six hours really started to kind of, you know, push and it ended up yesterday, I think they were just short of $900,000 on the final day, which honestly is probably about half a million, 400, half a million shorter than I thought. When I did the video on, um, well, a, couple, a few days ago now, when I was talking about like the final week of the Kickstarter, I think I said in that video, I thought there was a 60% chance that we'd get to eight, 8 million. Um, it was a... As soon as I did that, as soon as I did the video and I looked at the stats for like that day, which, you know, it was in the last week run up. So I think there was like four days left at that point. It was still very low amount on that day rate. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah, I maybe should have looked at that before I started talking <laughs> because it just it just didn't look like it was picking up that level of traction that we saw on the analytics from the last Kickstarter where you got that real like valley curve. Uh, and at the end, there was like a. a I think like they almost did as much on the last day in the last Kickstarter as they did on the first day. In this one, they've done a third, approximately. Well, it's less than a third. It might be more, more along of a quarter uh, of the, the the financial levels that they did on the first day. But important to note that those levels are massively higher than the last Kickstarter. You know, the last Kickstarter was doing, if memory serves me correctly, here it was like four or five hundred thousand dollars on the first day. This Kickstarter did like way over three million. So, yeah, uh, another really important metric as well, and I think the one that Catalyst will be probably most proud of is the amount of backers. Um, I think all that data has it should all be updated. I'm just looking on the website now. Yes, it has. So the final tally on the amount of backers is twenty three thousand six hundred and fifty four. That was up from the last Kickstarter, which again, I don't have that data in front of me, but I believe that was about, is it like 11,500, something like that. So that's a massive bump. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed with that. The one, I suppose, discrepancy in those like figures is that, and you may have seen this if you've been following along over the last few months, um, Catalyst asked people who were pledging to sign up to an email so that you know they could get all the latest news on it and it was like one of those sign up to tell us that you are pledging just so we can have some kind of idea of what to expect and the final tally on that was incredibly like thirty one and a half thousand sign ups um correlated to the final sign up of twenty three and a half thousand approximately so there is some shortfall there uh, that might just be people like not having the finance to do it. It might be people who have got multiple accounts and have decided to kind of amalgamate it all into one, which you can do on the Kickstarter. That's something that I've done. So I was running it off several burner accounts. I've, I'm still running it off several burners for the people that I bought it for across the community. But for myself, I just amalgamated it all into one package. 
because I'll save a considerable amount of money on shipping doing that. And frankly, I really don't care about the Visigoths and the Four Inch Madcap. I'll get one of each. That's absolutely fine for the sake of it being slightly collectible. Um, but I'm not interested at all. In, you know, previously I had multiple Kickstarter buy-ins and I was entitled to get like four, five quarter inch mad cats like you know no i'm i'm really not that bothered to get that many i think i probably would have just got rid of those on ebay so i'd much rather just have a sensible shipping cost <laughs> um as opposed to it getting into like the, the hundreds of dollar range um so yeah it was it was a it was a very very good day um they did a series of events as well i just think that the the final day was just slightly short of what i think i expected um I shouldn't be surprised though, because all my analysis of this Kickstarter has been pretty much wrong. Uh, I, months and months ago, I said I thought they'd get about 3.1 million on the Kickstarter. They eclipsed that by an epic level. Um, so again, I will always caveat that by saying I do try to be sensible and conservative with things like this. I think it's really silly to kind of shoot for the moon on, on financials. Um, it's just something you pick up in my line of work just always opt on the side of, of caution um, but I was delighted to be proved wrong obviously um, the last day though when I was kind of looking at it and I was in the last week I was like well you know if it follows the trend of the last Kickstarter it should t technically do X amount it didn't reach that amount unfortunately but again I, I don't think anyone at Catalyst will be you know, crying too hard about that. I think the, the last day, I think they did a really good push. You know, they had like a 24 hour event uh, thing going on that, you know, you could kind of just drop in on YouTube and, and watch. And it had all the kind of big players at, at Catalyst on there. Um, run as well by um, their new marketing person whose name has flown out of my mind. Um, but it's the, the, if you see the lady on the stream doing the presenting, that is um, the new marketing um director or marketing and bd directors i don't know what her official title is but uh, it's good that they've got someone that can do that full time i think you know i don't know necessarily if we'd have got these kind of events if they hadn't have had somebody like that at the helm um, because i would have been advising on things like that as well and that's kind of my kind of sphere of um that's not expertise i'm more a comms pr person really but the you know, from the point of view of like, how do we drill up some kind of buzz for this? And we're a very digital, um, like, you know, we've got a, a big digital following, like, what do we do? I think it really makes sense in the way that they did it. So that's good to see. Um, and I mean, it's, again, you know, just there's nothing bad about this at all. Um, it's all fantastic. I think as well, one rumour that I've been hearing, it's again, I'm filming this quite well, very early on Friday, so I don't necessarily know if this has been uh, confirmed for true uh, just yet, but there are rumours going around that they are going to unlock the Somerset Strikers pack and the um, the Blood Asp and the all the kind of regimental... Um, stickers and you know like they had the Waco Rangers in there for instance and I think Clan um, the Scorpion I can't remember what their, their name is the Scorpion Alliance something like that all that will be unlocked I don't want to say anything about that officially though because I've not seen any official comms from Catalyst on it I've just heard people like commenting on social media I've heard things going around saying that oh it's 7.5 million now They've confirmed that they'll allow those 8 million stretch goals. Does that mean, though, that they will be included in the as like a freebie, like a plus 8 million? So, we, you know, if you're on regiment level plus, you were going to get a free Somerset Strikers, and then anyone above company was able to get a Blood Asp. I don't think that's going to happen. I hope as well they don't do that, and I'm saying that objectively. Obviously, for me, it's good if they do that, because then I get free stuff. But I would be very, very careful about doing that if I was them, because that if you the second you start to say, are we going to throw, throw this thing in for free, you end up with like an extra half a million cost across the project. And I don't, you know, I'd, I'd much rather just front the cost myself at 30 bucks, right, than think about the central organisation directing the future of, um, Battletech having to take like X amount of hundred thousand pounds out of their business stream, 
they deserve that money. They've done very well. You know, I hope a lot of it gets reinvested back in. I hope a lot of them get big pay rises. <laughs> you know, all the good stuff that you'd expect from you know, like a successful campaign. So I'm not expecting you know them to just be throwing things around like confetti. It's great though if they just allow it as an add-on in the pledge manager. I think I'll be more than happy with that because obviously I will buy some. Um, and again, I'm I'm so like knee deep into the finances of this Kickstarter anyway. I mean, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on it now that I'm kind of past caring. Like, what's another 20 bucks? Uh, important to say as well that, um, and I, I'm not an eBay scalper, scalper or whatever they call them, very clear about that. In fact, I'd never do anything like that. I'd always give it away for a, probably like a fixed cost. But because a lot of stuff in the Kickstarter is not something I will want, I probably will make back like quite a lot of money uh, when it arrives. Things like the um, the maps and the you know all the, the map packs that we are getting for free, I don't use any of those. And you know after the Kickstarter, I mean you've got to be careful how you do this if you don't want to do the scalping thing, which I don't because I, I hate stuff like that. Um, you know I could put one of them on. Um, as soon as the Kickstarter arrives and people will pay like three times more for it than is market value so they might sell at retail for 30 quid and people will you know buy them off you on eBay you know the auction can get up to like 70 80 90 pounds um, I don't like when that happens though um, I, and I've I've had it done to me in a good way and done it to other people in a good way as well a um, very good example was somebody won, I once bought the uh, the legendary um, mech pack off somebody on eBay and it just spiraled out of control. I think I got it for about 200 pounds or something like that because I really wanted it and it, the shipping from America is crazy. So I was just like, you know, I was competing against a few other people and managed to win it. And the guy, I mean, talk about a good egg, uh, sent me an email like five minutes after I'd won it and basically just said, I'm sending you the bill now. And he sent the bill for like 50 quid. Uh, and he put a note on it saying, I could not possibly in good conscience accept £200 for this. I literally put it on for like 30 quid, uh, but he, I don't think he knew the kind of, you know, the demand for it, um, which I really appreciated. But I did kind of, you know, meet him halfway. I, I uh, We got talking, actually, it's, you know, we, you know, as you would if someone did something that nice. And uh, I think one of his family members had had uh, breast cancer or something like that, because I'd, I'd said to him, if you nominate a charity, I'll donate like a hundred pounds to to that charity because I was expecting to pay the two hundred. So I, I can't remember it was something like that. And he said, "Well, you know, one of my family members had breast cancer, so if you want to do that, you know, fine." So you can kind of like you do find people like that, especially across the BattleTech community. There are a lot of good people, and I'd much rather like act as a bit of a a semi retail hub in the short term. Um, Again, that's so loose because it's not really retail hub. It's just I'm going to have like X amount of extra things on there and I can put them on eBay and sell them at a fixed rate. And then, if, you know, if people are lucky enough to get it, then they get like a force pack for like, you know, I probably I probably will add like an extra fiver onto the retail cost because I've had to pay for shipping and all that stuff. And I'm sure people won't be more than that. But, you know, just in terms of like being fair, you can actually make quite a lot of money back on the uh, on the Kickstarters even by doing that. You don't have to be a scalper. So, you know, anyway, I've got massively off tangent there. It's a bit of a something I was thinking about this morning. That's why I'm rambling on about it. Um, anyway, yeah. So it's wonderful. Um, I think we we'd scheduled for June drops on this. So again, will it be June? Um, I mean, there's a long way to go. I mean, we're talking, you're talking like 13, 14 months. Um, the last time they did a Kickstarter as well, this is something to look out for, especially if you missed out backing uh, over the last month window. The last time they did a Kickstarter, they opened the window back up in the autumn. Um, I know because I actually bought something on that as well. I think I got an, another part to the Kickstarter, so I can't remember what I did, something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll do that again. It does tend to cause a little bit of angst and like grinding of teeth in the community though because I think it's like, well, this order should all be put in now. This is going to delay things. You hear things like that, but the fact of the matter is we don't know. Like they might have contracts in place with the Chinese factories in, you know, to start churning it all out in December. 
right? So in that case, you can actually open up, open it up in October and there's no consequence on it. It just gives them a little bit of an extra financial boost and people can then start to use, you know, uh, you know, like the stragglers that have missed out on this and then come into the Battletech community over the six months. You might get an extra thousand people back in that way. Um, so that might happen. Again, just if if the last Kickstarter was anything to go by, um, we did have to wait approximately, I think, six months longer than we expected. Um, I'm I'm going to say that. I mean, okay, my predictions are for naught recently. <laughs> but what I would say, I think Catalyst have clearly learned a ton. And they've not just done the Battletech Kickstarters, either. they've done multiple Kickstarters. Um, and I do think that like they'll have that June date set quite strictly. I think the only thing that can scupper it, the two things that are really out of their control, are shipping and the, the, any kind of geopolitical situation with China that might kick off over the next year. Um, so that's something, obviously, they can't do anything about that. Okay, let, let me draw a little bit of heat on them to some extent. They could have done something about it by not using China. Uh, I've spoken about that to quite a few people in like the comment section and on social media. Um, I personally would have been looking at alternative options if I were Catalyst. And I think, I mean, honestly, if I lost however amount of thousand that I've put into this, um, no, you won't lose it because it will get made somewhere, I'm sure. Um, and Catalyst are a robust business and it's a robust IP. So I'm not worried in the slightest. It's just that the delays might happen because they don't have contingencies or haven't thought about the kind of wider context of should we actually get this made in another country where okay it might make it a little bit more expensive to, for people but we know that we can get it without any of the kind of the ramifications of you know if um, the US put major restrictions like financial embargoes on uh, the Chinese economy so yeah that's something to think about but um, fingers crossed the you know and not not just talking about the kickstart of here let's just have fingers crossed that doesn't happen in general because we've got enough going on in the world at the moment with um, you know Ukraine Sudan um, very very trying economic times for a lot of people so I think the last thing we need now is another major you know international conflict like we ever need them anyway but especially at the moment I think that could be incredibly traumatic so yeah, um, but I mean that's that's that discussion is for another day. If anything ever um, comes about it, if not, we can just assume that we've just had a hell of a, a Kickstarter. It's all fantastic. We're all in good spirits. I think um, the pledge manager I think should open soon. I've not heard any comms about it. I don't know if it will be tomorrow. It could be in a month. I've got no idea when it will be. Uh, if you have signed up for the Kickstarter, though, obviously you will get. Um, well, I certainly do. You get the uh, reminders on the email for uh, any like comments that, that Catalyst put out there. Um, do keep up to those as well if you've signed up because you'll find that they're like, you know, they'll give you really important intel in there. Um, especially if you're like a, like a big into like miniatures like I am, like if and you want to do force planning. You know, like, for instance, if they re if they say, like, oh, yeah, everybody gets a free Somerset Strikers above Regiment, and then you buy one yourself, and then you have two, and you're like, oh, I've ended up spending money that I didn't need to do here. The only way you can kind of not have that happen is if you, you know, keep up with the comms, obviously, and, and keep up with the pledge manager. Um, one final, I suppose, like a customer service announcement thing here. All my uh, credit card payments uh, refused to go through last night. Uh, my bank was like spamming me um, on my phone with text messages saying, have you been buying strange things in US and Canadian dollars? <laughs> uh, we're going to put a hold on this for now because it's, you know, it's quite a bit of money. I also as well, I spent a considerable amount of money yesterday on my boiler. I got like an entire new boiler system. So like, I think there was so much money coming out of my account. The bank were like, has this guy been robbed or something? So, yeah, I, it, and I've heard other people across the community saying that they had similar messages. Do check that. Go into the pledge manager. Well, sorry, not the pledge manager. Go into the Kickstarter account and just, you'll have a red banner across the top of it and it will say, like, your payment details needs to be updated or something like that. You have seven days starting of yesterday. So you're talking six days now to get that resolved. If you don't, you drop out of the Kickstarter. So big public service announcement. If it happened to me, 
it could happen to others. Um, I've sorted it all out already, but just be acutely aware of that. Just if you, as long as you go into the Kickstarter site, um, log into your details, and it will literally say like you have successfully pledged and paid for this thing, and then you're like, okay, that's cool. You know that you've got it then, but just be aware of that. Anyway, I'm going to leave that here. Um, so a nice quick one today. I'm going to do, um, I mean, I'm hoping now I can kind of get back to business as usual with, I've got some uh, videos planned on the War of 3039, which I've done kind of all the note taking for. I've done quite a lot of reading on it as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to do that. That'll probably be over uh, several um, parts because now the Kickstarter is kind of, um, you know, all the the thing is done, uh, you know, all finished yesterday, obviously. So I can kind of move on now to doing the more, like normal content um yeah i'll probably as well a lot of people's asked, asked me to do something with the shelves at the back because i think people are for whatever reason intrigued by all the stuff back there so i might do like a quick video on showing that i, I it's quite weird i it's, I, I i always think like the backdrops like this it's just like confetti for the wider audience right so it's like so you don't have to look at my ugly face for like 30 minutes or whatever but I think some people are like straining to try and see what it is and I think like I've seen other YouTube people doing it as well where I think they'll get like a lot of oh show us what's on there show us what's on there so I might do some of them something over that in May um when the light gets better I've got a beautiful like you know panoramic sky in front of me here so if I can get up early enough on a morning when there's like radiant sunshine coming through I should have good light to be able to take some photos of it or record it or whatever else so anyway we'll see what happens so that's what we're planning on for May um for DFA I've, I'm recording with DFA on Sunday evening um so just in a couple of days we're going to do some analysis on the kickstarter like the what I've been talking about now but obviously much higher end because there's three of us able to crunch data and you know, Aaron's and Tom and uh, Chris as well. Don't forget Chris. Chris is the guy that does all the editing there. Um, they just make it look so pretty that I <laughs> I can just go on and kind of give my like two pennies worth and talk about some stats. But ultimately, it's, you know, it's those guys that make it look absolutely fantastic. So keep uh, an, an eye out for that as well. I think that will be scheduled to drop on Wednesday this week. I think we're having a bit of a reshuffle round on the usual um, content but don't quote me on that because that's obviously up to Aaron. Aaron is the uh, the schedule manager but I think we were talking about doing it on Wednesday uh, and we'll pr I probably will on that because it gets obviously a much bigger audience than this channel probably will talk about then some of the issues like that we might be facing with like the pledge manager uh, a reopening of the kickstarter things of that nature so if you'd like to hear us all going to further detail please do tune into that so anyway i'll leave that here and i'll thank you very much for watching and i'll hopefully catch you again next time